Chapter 5. Helmholtz Energy and Gibbs Energy. Section 5.4. U and A depend on T and V. U can be expressed as a function of temperature and volume. So du can be written as delta u over delta t times dt plus delta u over delta v times dv. Delta u over delta t under constant volume condition is simply C sub v, the isochoric heat capacity. Delta u over delta v under constant temperature condition can be derived using one of the four Maxwell relations. So over here, delta u over delta v is t delta s minus p delta v over delta v on a constant temperature condition. The first term is t times delta s over delta v here. The second term is negative p. Delta s over delta v is delta p over delta t. Pay attention to the subscripts. This is just one of the Maxwell relations. And then we can use this to obtain delta u over delta v on a constant temperature condition. For Vanderbilt's gas, U depends on volume when the temperature is held constant. The Vanderbilt's equation is this, P is nRT over V minus NB minus N squared over V squared. A and B are Vanderbilt's parameters. The variation of U with V is therefore this uh, derivation here, T times delta P over delta T on a constant volume condition minus P. And this is simply nR over V minus NB. Minus P is replaced by minus this uh, whole thing. And then in the end, the first term and the second term cancel. We have N squared over V squared. So if both the temperature and volume of a Vanderbilt's gas change, we need to look at this dt term and dv term. Delta U is the integral of this uh, CVDT and also the integral of this an squared over v squared dv. Again, this part is how u changes with v. We integrate this integral, we get cv times delta t. We integrate this part, it's just an squared times 1 over v final minus 1 over v initial. And then there's a negative sign in the front because the integral of 1 over v squared is negative 1 over v. In this derivation, CV is assumed to be independent of temperature. Uh, it's mostly true because the isochoric heat capacity is approximately a constant within a moderate temperature range. But for you know some uh, molecules with uh, very low vibrational frequencies, uh, this CV may depend on temperature. It's just because we have uh, many low frequency vibration modes, the molecules can occupy some higher excited vibrational states uh, at uh, even uh, room temperature. Now get back to the equation for delta U. For Vanderbilt's gas, the internal energy depends on both the temperature and the volume of the gas. How does U depend on temperature? The dependence is C sub V. How does U depends on volume? The dependence is A N squared over V squared. Uh, for ideal gas, we know A is zero. This uh, Vanderbilt's parameter A is zero. Delta U is simply the integral of C V D T. U only depends on temperature. What about solids and liquids? Well, still we use this equation. It comes from this uh, expression of delta U, which is T delta S minus P delta V. And, uh, and then we're going to use this uh, one of the uh, Maxwell relations. Delta S over delta V on a constant temperature is delta P over delta T on a constant volume condition. So that's why you have this. And we can prove this delta P over delta T on a constant volume condition is just alpha uh, divided by kappa for all substances. Uh, we actually need to use the triple product rule and reciprocal rule in calculus. Alright, so we can actually uh, rewrite delta P over delta T as delta V over delta T over negative delta V over delta P. On top, you have V times alpha. On the bottom, you have V times kappa. Therefore, the result is T times alpha over kappa minus P. 
Uh, this equation holds for all substances, uh, including uh, gases, liquids, and uh, solids. It's just when you use this for liquids and solids, it's particularly convenient because alpha and kappa are just uh, constants. You look up the values of alpha and kappa for those liquids and solids, plug those in. Uh, how do we get delta U? Uh, delta U is just integral of CV dt again plus the integral of delta U over delta V times dV. Uh, but over here, if you have solids and liquids, you can rewrite this as T times alpha over kappa minus P. So it's going to be roughly this. If you know the temperature pressure and the values of alpha and kappa, just do the calculation. For most solids and liquids, uh, T times alpha over kappa is much larger than P. That we can even neglect the pressure. Why is that? Here's an example. If you have copper at 300 Kelvin and one bar condition, we have alpha, we have kappa, and uh, we can compute T times alpha over kappa. The result is 21,000. So this term is 21,000 larger than this term. Of course, we can then neglect the smaller, much smaller term over here. Again, when you do addition or subtraction between two numbers, you can always neglect the much smaller number. So again, for most liquids and solids, uh, we first express delta U over delta V in this format, T times alpha over kappa minus P. And usually we can ignore this p because uh, this p is uh, much smaller than t times alpha over kappa. So it's going to be just t times alpha over kappa. So right here. And we have this expression. And how would you actually obtain the numerical value of u? Well, just uh, plug in the value of CVM, t initial, t final, plug in the volume change plug in the values of alpha and kappa you looked up, plug in the temperature you get delta U. Again, U, H, A, and G all depend on pressure, volume, temperature, and entropy. It's just uh, only two variables or independent variables. You can pick any two out of PVTS. It's up to you. Uh, for A, the Helmholtz energy, usually we say A is a function of temperature and volume for convenience. DA is DU minus TS. DU is TDS minus PDV. The differential of TS is TDS plus SDT. We cancel TDS and negative TDS. We get negative SDT minus PDV. Well, from this equation, you can see the change of A depends on the change of T and the change of V. A is a function of T and V. And also, we see the dependence, uh, I think, are both negative. So, dA over dT is negative entropy when volume is constant. Entropy is always positive, so dA over dT is always negative. Uh, over here, dA over dV is negative P when temperature is constant. So when temperature is constant, dA over dV is always negative because pressure is always negative. Uh, mathematically, it's this. Delta A over delta T under constant volume condition is negative entropy. It's always negative. Delta A over delta V under constant temperature condition is negative P, which is always negative. Uh, also, we can analyze the change of A quantitatively if volume is constant. The A only depends on temperature. If temperature is constant, A only depends on volume. So when volume is constant, delta A is negative integral S D T. Alright? And when temperature is constant, delta A is just negative integral P D V. Uh, usually it's uh, easy to derive this for a gas, for a liquid, or a solid. It's pretty easy to do this. Uh, this one, it really depends. I mean, if you have a small temperature range, entropy uh, can be viewed as a constant within a very small temperature range, and then you can compute delta A directly. However, even if you have a moderate temperature range, because entropy depends on temperature, 
and somehow you need to kind of express entropy in terms of temperature and you need to integrate a function of temperature over here when temperature changes all right a is u minus ts therefore dA is negative s dt minus pdv uh, here's the one line definition all right so a always decreases if t increases and v increases because of this equation uh, you can see negative s is how a depends on t negative p is how a depends on volume here's one example problem 5.4.1 which of the following two ideal gases at 300 Kelvin has a larger Helmholtz energy A? And you can calculate the difference. And what's the physical meaning of this difference? Two different ideal gases. One has a 10 liter volume, 10 bar pressure. The other, 1 liter volume, 100 bar pressure. They have the same temperature. At constant temperature, as volume increases, the Helmholtz energy decreases and therefore this one has a larger volume and the uh, lower Helmholtz energy this one smaller volume larger Helmholtz energy all right and dA is negative SDT minus PDV uh, the temperature is constant I think uh, I mentioned uh, 300 Kelvin somewhere so both gases are at 300 Kelvin so you don't have to worry about dT dA is negative PDV and now we're calculating the difference in A between these two gases. All right, so uh, this is the Roman nu numeral one, Roman numeral two. Uh, this is a, just the difference, all right? This is delta A is uh, number two gas minus number one gas. We integrate negative PDV. Uh, both are ideal gases, P is NRT over V. We integrate this, we get negative NRT times the natural logarithm of V we plug in the volume of gas 2, the volume of gas 1, we get some expression. PV is uh, just, uh, you know, you just uh, plug in the numbers. PV is 100 bar liter. And uh, you plug in this uh, L10, and uh, we get the result. Uh, okay, I think I might have made a mistake here I think PV is 100 bar liter and then multiply by LN10 it should be uh, 230 bar liters sorry about that uh, but again we have this delta A uh, that's the difference in A between these two uh, different gases between these two different gases uh, what's the physical meaning of this difference? Well, it's uh, it's just the maximum amount of work an uh, ideal gas can do. Uh, is I think it's uh, it should be uh, uh, 23 kilojoule when it changes from one liter 100 bars to 10 liters 10 bars under the constant temperature condition. Conversely, uh, the minimum amount of work needed to change an ideal gas from 10 liters to 10 uh, 10 liters 10 bars to 1 liter 100 bars should be uh, I think it's 23 kilojoule again uh, this PV is actually 100 bar liters that's 100 bar liters no matter you use these two numbers or these two numbers PV is 100 bar liters uh, LN10 is 2.3 so put 2.3 times 100 should be 230 and 230 bar liters should be 23 kilojoule sorry about the mistake